joined now from Kyiv by Olena Guinness, who is a former television journalist who now finds herself sheltering in a basement with her three children, the youngest just four months old. Oh, Lena. I mean, I don't know if you know very much about what happened to this apartment block in Kyiv this morning, but, my goodness, we feel for you. What is the situation there where you're sheltering? Uh, I know that it hit very close because we heard the explosion. Yeah. We are very close to the place. So when it happened, I heard a very loud noise. Katya woke up and it was very close. The glass was shaking in, uh, in the window. So we heard it very very well in the shelter. It, well, we, it's very close. To well, we know that, that two innocent people were killed and at least three injured. Uh, the, the, those figures may go up as, as reports come in. You, you, you're in a makeshift shelter very close to where this, this impact happened. Can you just describe to us what it is? What is your shelter? My shelter is just a basement under the building. Right. So there is nothing special. There are no, you know, good uh, bomb shelters in our neighborhood. This is just basements of the old Soviet building. Yeah, but ours, it's even better. As you can see, it has like a, a ceiling, a normal floor, some chairs. Because most of the shelters, they have just sand on the floor. And this is the reason why people were killed in this apartment block. They were all staying at homes because our basements, our shelters are very bad. So they, the people were staying, uh, many people stay at night at, at home. So they are vulnerable. And, and Alina, how much, how much time each day do you spend uh, underground in the shelter? Well, me personally, we come here in the, like, starting from 4 or 5 p.m. Till, till the morning. Like, when it is the daytime, we try to go out, to go to the supermarket, to buy some food, to go home. But after this uh, apartment block was hit so close to us, you know, I will think twice now how to, how to go back home with these three children. <laughs> because it's like, how lucky we'll see how lucky we are. I mean, we can go home for just one hour, and at this time, you know, the missile is building. <laughs> On the other hand, you see, like, he's coughing. And uh, we need some fresh air because otherwise we will be, you know, in bad situation here too. Elena, how do you reassure the children? I'm trying my best. I'm trying to my, my best to say that we will be fine and there is still hope and we will resist. But I don't know how to reassure them today. I just wanted to say that I just heard your uh, military expert talking to you right now. And, you know, this reminded me, I'd like to quote Winston Churchill. Like, good morning, Britain. You all know Winston Churchill, right? Mm -hmm. And this military expert and other politicians in the West, they remind me of a, a, peaser, a peacemaker who is feeding a crocodile, hoping that crocodile would, will eat him last. What they're worried this about, is... what they're worried about, Alina, is the possibility, which, which didn't exist when we were facing Hitler or not facing Hitler, uh, is, is the possibility of this thing going nuclear. If NATO countries do take on Russia, do impose uh, a no-fly zone, uh, that, that, that could escalate things to an unthinkable degree. That's, that's what they're worried about. Please tell me, was Ukraine escalating anything here to any certain degree? Was Ukraine doing anything very special, you know, to make Putin angry? Or he just decided? So I don't know what you guys need to do anything special to irritate him more or to escalate. You have access to information what he shows in Russian TV. NATO is already the enemy. Washington is already the enemy. Europe is already the enemy. I mean, Putin would put all the blame on this economical situation, on the Western sanctions, on, on, on Ukraine. They already blame you that you give us a lot of arms and you are already involved, you know. And I know that even on your channel, there were experts who were saying before it all started that it's not really about Ukraine. It's a dialogue between Washington and Moscow. So why are you right now pretending that it's not about you, that it's only about Ukraine and you can give us arms to protect mm -hmm. ourselves? Alina, we do, we do hear you. We do hear you. Alina, and, and those what, like you loud and clear. Yeah, really what do. would your message be to Boris Johnson, Elena? Please impose no fly zone right now and stop this bef before it gets too late, before, before the genocide is, is done in Ukraine, before I am killed and my children and my husband. 
Alina, you're a journalist, as we said. Your husband's a news editor. Uh, he's now in uniform. He's fighting. Uh, you hardly see him anymore. You must be almost unable to believe that this has happened in the space of, what, three weeks? Well, he is not really in the uniform. He joined the Territorial Defense Unit, which means he is given a big gun, and that's all. So he is not even given a uniform. There is not enough of uniforms and protection suits or whatever. So he is in his civilian clothes. You, you've seen him just on this video. This is how he is dressed up. Mm -hmm. But he just given the gun. And this goes for the majority of these civilian people who joined uh, the territorial defense to protect uh, Kiev. These are just ordinary people. Most of them, like my husband, he was carrying the gun the last time when he was at school. And he is now 37. And, the, and he is doing well if you compare him with another comrade. I mean, we are just civilians who have no choice but to stay here and protect our home. Mm. I know that many people were evacuated, but again, quoting Winston Churchill, that you cannot win by evacuations. Evacuations do not help to win the war. And this is why we stay. And yes, it's surreal. Yes, we did not expect this to happen. And... Uh, you know, you say it's just at your doorstep, it's already in our homes. Uh, you know, it's closer than you think. Lena, thank you very much. I have to say, your children are lovely. Uh, they've been making faces at the camera as you've been talking. They're very, very sweet. Elena, I feel just totally powerless. To, uh, I don't know what to say to you. You know, you shouldn't be in this situation protecting your baby and your children from what's happening, your husband there taking up arms. We you, you just... We send you, you know, love and luck and, and applaud your courage and thank you for being with us this morning. Thank you.